Good morning. I hope I'm live in the right place. As soon as I hit live, I kind of had a moment where I thought I might be on <laughs> my personal page. I'm hoping I'm in the right place. If you hop on this morning, let me know um, where we're, where you're watching from. <laughs> and my name is Tracy Campbell. Welcome to my sweet home this morning. Um, I am from SweetHomeStagingDesign.com and from here on Facebook at um, My Sweet Home. And so I'm here for part two of a little decorating mini-series um, this week that we started yesterday afternoon. And if you were live with me yesterday afternoon, let me know in the comments below. Yesterday, um, I started by showing you how I am um, sprucing up or freshening up some of the uh, areas in my home for spring. And I started by redecorating the bottom portion of my hutch cabinet. And we had uh, some a, a lot of interest. And uh, lots of you wanted me to show you the different levels and how my mind works when I'm restyling and redecorating some things. And so what we're doing is we started from the bottom and we're working our way up to the very top of this cabinet. And I'm giving you my tips and tricks on how I style and redecorate my hutch for spring. So hop on, tell me good morning and where you're watching from. I would love to welcome and meet you um, to and, and welcome you to my sweet home. So, and also let me know if you caught yesterday's live. Yesterday as we uh, redecorated the bottom portion of my hutch cabinet. And then also, if you're interested in how I'd style the top, the very tippy tippy top <laughs> of this cabinet, let me know also because I may do a live on it as well and show you um, how I style some things at the top. Give you some inspiration too. So while we're having some friends hop on, if you would go ahead and do this for me and uh, we will get rolling. Uh, this won't take us very long because we don't have as big of a space as yesterday's decorating little area here. And so I think you'll really uh, see me repeating lots of the same uh, design ideas that I used on the bottom portion. So this will be serving as good practice um, for us both. And, and we'll also just kind of um, repeat some of those elements in our mind and help you learn how you can um, Oh, what do we want to say? Replicate or repeat these same ideas when you're styling and, and doing some things in your home. And so bear with me because I'm actually standing on a chair. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I'm actually standing on a chair. That just tells you how short I am <laughs> because I'm not able to reach these top shelves very well without a little bit of um, vertical help. I'm vertically challenged. <laughs> so the lighting is a little bit wonky this morning. So just bear with me and we'll pull through it together. We have 25 watchers this morning. Good deal. You all join me this morning. I will also be live tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And probably will be more than likely we'll be styling the top part of this cabinet. So if you're interested in that, be sure to turn your notifications on and join me uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central for that little um, video out there. That should be interesting. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get the camera that high tomorrow, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll make it work. Good morning, PM. All right, so let's get started. All right, so just let me give you a little background information on this portion of my hutch cabinet. Um, this portion obviously has the see-through glass doors. Now I know in today, lots of kitchen designs today, lots of you may have upper kitchen cabinets that have the see-through glass doors. And, and if you don't, you may see those glass doors and think, oh my goodness, how would I ever um, decorate those top portion of my cabinets um, in a way where I can, first, they can be functional and store things, but yet be decorative at the same time. Good morning, Natalie. Thanks for watching. Um, and so hopefully, not only will this help you with um, a hutch cabinet of this nature, but may also help those of you that may have um, updated kitchen cabinets with these see-through doors, okay? Um, I love these see-through doors, especially when they have the lighting um, options, because it can really highlight some decorative pieces in your home, okay? And don't 
be afraid by the open glass okay we I will show you how you can store lots of things in here but yet still keep it decorative and functional at the same time okay all right so lots of you with these see-through glass doors may have a shelf option and if not you may just have one layer one level I should say but mine is tall enough that I actually need a shelf in mine and so with that I always recommend having a see-through glass shelf because it allows the light to shine through okay now the bottom portion of my cabinet virtual well the bottom portion of this uh, area of my cabinet typically always stays the same and this is where I always keep my glassware um, for special events and thing gatherings and things like that so this this level right here I pretty much it goes untouched except for when we pull out glassware and actually use it or when I'm just freshening it up and it needs to be uh, washed or just dusted okay and behind these closed doors it stays pretty well dust free it stays pretty clean so I don't have to take these out and clean them very often okay that's another good thing about these doors um, and so as you can see that light shines way down through this uh, this shelf and is still able to highlight and show off the pretty glass and stemware down here so let me just tell you my tips and tricks for for arranging glass and stemware down here at the bottom i i have several different styles of glasses here stemware drinkware whatever you want to call it so what i like to do is I, good morning darla thanks for watching um i always like to start in rows okay and then I also start in the back and work my way to the front of the cabinet and the reason why I do that is for one it's just easier to reach and have access to as you're building your uh, display forward um, but what it also allows me to do is to place my taller um, items in the back and then work my way to the front sort of like the same stair stepping ideas that I've given you before when we work with vignettes think of it the same way okay start with your taller items across the back and then work down to the lower levels as you reach the front okay that also allows your eyes to see more of your items okay if you place your uh, shorter objects in the front your taller items in the back it allows you to see more of both okay because obviously if you placed your taller items in the front it could possibly block the view of your shorter items that you might be placing in the back so taller items in the back and then sometimes depending on how many I have I might also carry my taller item items around the sides and so I have quite a few taller items and so what I have done is I've kind of made a little wrap around I've started over here tall from the sides all the way around the back and up this side with my shorter glasses in the middle and in the front okay so hopefully that gives you some ideas on how you can arrange that as well. Now, you may not have as many items like this, and if you don't, that's okay. Just make it a smaller scale display, okay? You may only take up one portion of your cabinet uh, with a little display like this, okay? So let's move on up to the top shelf, and let me show you how I decorate it. This is where I use most of my larger scaled items because they're closer to the lighting, okay and it also allows me to play in with the whole color scheme okay um, down here it's just easier for me to keep all of my glass and stemware down here because for one it's easier access it's easier for me to reach when I'm ready to use it versus having it up high okay and then for two is I'm not as worried about the light shining on these um, as much as I would like the light to show and really display uh, show off my pieces that I'm going to use up here at the top okay so hope that helps hope that hope that's clear enough for you to understand hope I explained that okay all right so what I'm going to use on the top and in the back if you saw my video yesterday on how I arranged the lower level of this uh, cabinet I started with a um, little swag that I always like to put in the back is sort of like my little backdrop or my anchor piece if you will okay now I love using greenery and this one is just from Hobby Lobby okay and then it's also playing off of some of the greens that I had at the bottom level if you missed that yesterday go back and catch the replay it's still here on the wall for you to to watch anytime you're ready so I just am bringing some of that green up 
because it's going to make a whole cohesive look when we're all finished, okay, if we tie in lots of repeating colors. Good morning, Cynthia. Thank you for watching. You will let me know where you're watching from as well, okay? Hope everybody's doing good this morning. All right, and then I'm going to start. I'm going to continue. I've already started, I guess you could say. I'm going to continue um, by using an easel, okay? Now, I love these easels because it allows me to use some plates vertically in a display. So, I always like to put this over here on the side. You know me, I like to have balance on equal corners, okay, equal balance on the corners. And so that's what I'm gonna start working towards right here with this easel. <clears throat> Placing it in this corner. Another, um, if you have an option of picking a cabinet or if you're in the process of designing your kitchen cabinets, always go with the option of having your shelf be able to be adjustable. Okay, you can adjust the height level to anything you would like. It works with your uh, decor. Hi, Vani. Have a great trick from years of catering. You can buy plastic light, light ice cubes. And if you place them, let me see if I can see the rest of your comment. In the back row of your stemware, all of them will glisten. It truly creates a setting. That's a great idea. That's a great tip. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so, I'm going to start by on this corner over here and I'm going to grab a few things down at my lower level. So hang with me. I'm going to go grab them. And what I'm going to do, how many of you have um, fine china or dinnerware that you only bring out for certain um, times of the year? Okay, maybe for like a holiday dinner event or something like that. This is the perfect time to pull those items out or pull one of your plates out that you use every day. Okay. I'm pulling out some of mine. I have just a dinner plate followed by a um, dessert plate, okay? And so what I'm going to do here, very carefully without falling, um, I'm going to put this plate on my easel, okay? Now, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hopefully we can see this. Okay, let me open it up a little bit more. We'll keep it like that. All right. And then I'm going to layer it. I always like to layer things not only vertically, but also horizontally as well. Okay. And so then I'm going to place this one right in front of it. And so you see that it also allows me to bring in some extra pattern. Okay. Now the lighting might not be well, 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 you can see the patterns of the design on my plate, but using those two coordinating designs, um, just gives a little extra interest and a little bit extra texture there as well okay now I always like to add something else if I have room or space now I have some stars around in a few areas of my home and so you know me I like to do things that are repeating in nature at times and so all I'm gonna do now is place a simple little metal star right there in the front okay Okay, that's one corner. We have some weight over here. Now we have to repeat that by balancing this corner um, with an object as well. And this is where, whoops, my door is not gonna open any wider for me. Okay, this is where um, I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to store some things as well, not only decorative, but to have them functional as well in a, in a space like this. And so I have lots of uh, bakeware. Um, if you f are familiar with Temptations, I love this stuff. And so it comes in big sets, okay? But the sets that um, I have can all be stacked together in a way that can be decorative, but also save you some storage space as well, okay? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of place this right here. And I may move this in just a minute. We'll see what it looks like um, as we get going. Um, and I still want some of my greenery to show, so I might just reach down and pull up some of these little sprigs and just kind of rework them so that it shows. Okay, so now, it's not quite vertically balanced yet, is it? <laughs> um, we have to keep adding. So that's where we're going to keep stacking. Okay. So the next object that I'm going to use is another piece that goes right inside of it, just like this. Okay. 
we're still stacking, we're still building that balance. I'm gonna keep on going with a few more items. I have some um, meatloaf dishes that all, um, that all coordinate as well. And so instead of, them, instead of sitting them in in the same direction, I'm gonna tilt them this way so that I can see this part of the design, okay? like that all right so now we're starting to get a little more balance but I'm not quite finished let me grab one more item to put on this side we have a serving tray so now I'm gonna put this in the back and the reason why I didn't put this in first is because if I I'm gonna um, display it like this vertically okay it may slide because this is a glass shelf. It doesn't have anything uh, holding it in place unless I put like a non-skid um, little uh, piece of plastic or rubber on the bottom of it. So when I put this back here, it can sit on my greenery and it also allows these dishes in front of it to kind of hold it in place, okay? So there we go, almost finished. Now, this is a little more visible to the eye than it looks on my camera because my camera is a little tilted. Um, but I hope you get the idea. Right here I have stacked two, four, I have five pieces right here from that set that I have given storage for and is stored decoratively, okay? So it's functional and decorative as well. Isn't that the same as the bowl below? Uh, yes, you're right. You're right, Vonnie. I used a serving bowl that I used yesterday in the lower portion of that. Um, if you missed that, that's a serving bowl. Let me grab it. I used this on my lower level yesterday. Okay, and so it just basically is tying in some of those repeating colors and patterns. Okay, and so um, anytime you have something that you can repeat or tie in colors and patterns, go for it, okay? That really helps pull your designs together and make everything look cohesive, okay? All right, we're not finished with that design yet either. <laughs> By the way, I have one more item that I'm gonna pull in and show you in just a second. Um, I love using this um, pattern. I'm gonna kind of slide this to the side and I still might rearrange this just a tiny bit. And that's okay, when you're rearranging things, play around with it. You may have um, stumbled upon a design um, arrangement that you may not have thought of before you started. And so I like to rearrange things as I go along and not lock myself in to a particular thought pattern. Um, and so I've kind of stumbled upon some great ideas by doing that. Hi Donna, good morning. Thank you, Bonnie. All right, so the next item that I'm gonna use, oh goodness, reaching down low for these. Um, I love to collect vintage uh, yellow wear, okay? And if you catch my live video tomorrow morning where I show you how to style the very tippy top of this cabinet, you'll see that I'm gonna also tie in this um, similar pattern up at the top okay this is not the same designs as this it doesn't even coordinate this is a true vintage antique piece um, but it carries lots of the same colors in the yellows the browns and the creams okay so i'm going to place this right over here and the reason why i'm needing to do that is i'm needing to carry some of this um, browns and and darker colors over just a little bit okay I have some of these browns and creams over here so I kind of need to darken this a little bit now these plates are showing a lot brighter and whiter than they truly are in person because of the lighting and I'm not sure there we go if I turn that off you kind of see that it pulls in some of the white creamery uh, stripe from this bowl to the plate and then let me turn this off for a second now, this might give you kind of more of a true idea of what the true colors are. It shows in some of the creameries from this little um, area as well, okay? I might just leave that off for a minute and see what you think. Uh, that might help you see the colors just a tiny bit better. And then over here, I'm gonna tie in, actually, I'm gonna wait and hold off on those just for a second. Um, I have another cream colored piece that I want to tie in and you tell me what you think 
um, I love this cream pitcher and I love using it in different areas. And so all I've done is adding just a little um, sprig of greenery to it. Okay, keep it simple. And um, I'm gonna add this right here. Let's do a little bit of sliding for a second. <clears throat> okay, I think that will work. All right. Do you see how it's starting to pull together even more now? And I have lots of stair stepping going on. I have some higher levels for my plate, the higher level of my picture arrangement, and I'm working down. I've got the medium and then I'm working down lower. Okay. And so anytime you can do that stair stepping, really take advantage of it. All right. So do you see how I placed the handle this direction? That was intentional. If I place it in this direction, it would still be visible, but it, it almost looks too busy and too cluttered right here in front of this little arrangement. Instead, I need something in this little open space, and so that's why I did that. And I like the way the, the handle, the white of that handle, pops against the back look of the wood color back there okay now i have one more item that we're going to potentially add to the background right here in this open space now if i was just going for all decorative i would probably leave it as is okay um but i still need to keep this as functional as far as storage goes and so that's why i need to add this extra piece because I don't have another place in my home to store it. So that's why I'm going to add something else. Uh, yes, right here. You're exactly right, Bonnie. That's where I'm going to add my next item that matches this set. Okay. Hang with me while I grab it. <coughs> and it is the matching cake plate. All right. And so let's see if we can add this right over here i'm going to slide this out for just a second this is also um, a good time to add these pieces in the back so that the, the pieces in front of them can actually hold them in place now if you have um if you are worried about these sliding forward get some of the little rubber grip mat um, usually the dollar store has that um, and you can cut a little piece of that and place it on the bottom and that keeps things from sliding around on you too much okay now let's see what we have let's take a step back that's looking more together right there all right uh, oh thank you diane all right so what do you think i think we've pulled it together nicely now as you can tell, that greenery that I first started with is not very visible at this point. But when you are standing down lower, we're, we are way up high. We are above eye level um, with the camera this morning. But if you are standing lower at real eye level, you would be about right here. And since this is a see-through shelf, some of that greenery is going to show through and actually show through and be visible to the eye uh, from down below. But it also just kind of fills in some of these under the, the, the plate um, type areas that otherwise would be empty and a little dark. Okay, creative show. So we can turn this light back on. But you can see the true colors uh, you can really see on camera when the lighting is off. But love the way that light shines through and shows that all of those elements together now the last two items that i usually like to add is the matching salt and pepper shaker um, to my dinnerware and let's see if we can find the perfect place to put these really the only space that i have to put them would be right here in front of my picture um, but to me that's a little too much white on white right there um, you could pers it's, it's a personal preference but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can scoot my plates back a little bit oops sorry that made a weird noise and then since we have this star right here it kind of breaks up the whites a little bit um, and then I will put those right there maybe could might be better to put them on the side actually let's see 
I think that looks a little better on the side. Um, or I may even put those down at the lower level. I don't know. You, you can play around with it and decide. Um, ideally, I would like to have them maybe in front of this or in front of this, um, but I don't have enough shelf space in front of it um, to put those in. So we'll just squeeze those in over on the corner. And then if you have too much white on white, um, you could add, let me grab one of these just to show you. Since we're pulling in some of that greenery, we've got the greenery in the back and the greenery up here. You could just add a little splash of greenery down here at the bottom. Okay. And then place these, nestle these little salt and pepper shakers up with the greenery. Okay, see how that makes them pop even more? And maybe add a little bit more greenery right here. I'm pulling from my bottom level here and um, and then put that right there. I think that breaks them up and looks nice there. Okay, thank you, Darla. Thank you, Vani. So when you shut your cabinet doors, this is the, the last test here. When you shut the cabinet doors, how does everything appear through the glass? Now, ideally, I would like to have my shelf line up with some of the, the window painting um, on these panes, but it's just not doable for my glassware at the bottom. I'm okay with that, um, but I would say if it was any more noticeable, I might have a little problem with it. I don't know. I'm just funny like that. I like lines to match up and things like that. Um, I could maybe lower this maybe one more level, this little shelf. Um, it still wouldn't match up perfectly, but I do like to have enough clearance above the, lit the tops of my glassware down here to get those out safely without chipping the edges, okay? So sometimes you just kind of have to to give on some things, okay, when it comes to designing and displaying um, things like that. So hopefully this has given you some good inspiration for how you can style things in your open glass, open door um, display areas in your kitchen or in a hutch cabinet like this. So I've turned the lighting off so you can see more of the true colors there. Thank you, Mary. And um, if you would, if you have some friends that you think and you know would love to, to see these ideas, please sprinkle. I would so appreciate that. And then tomorrow, I'm going to show you how I uh, arrange the very tippy top of this cabinet at the top, okay? I'm going to be using several uh, vintage items, and then I'm also going to be showing you more of a collection um, with my yellowware here. Sorry, my phone says low battery. All right, so the tops of cabinets are great places to use things that you like to collect. And so, also here as well. Like I love collecting this Temptations bakeware um, and things like that. So use these little areas to display things and have functionality at the same time, okay? Hope this gives you some inspiration. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, sprinkling, uh, and uh, join me tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for more inspiration for the top of my cabinet. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye.